the life and sad ending of Waylon Jennings. Waylon Jennings was born on June 15, 1937, on the J.W. Bittner Farm, near Littlefield, Texas. He was the son of Laureen Beatrice and William Albert Jennings. The Jennings family line descended from Irish and Black Dutch. The Shipley line descended from Cherokee and Comanche families. The name on Jennings's birth certificate was Wayland. It was changed after a Baptist preacher visited his parents and congratulated his mother for naming him after the Wayland Baptist University in Plainview, Texas. Laureen Jennings who had been unaware of the college, changed the spelling to Waylon. Jennings later expressed in his autobiography, I didn't like Waylon. It sounded corny and hillbilly, but it's been good to me, and I am pretty well at peace with it right now. After working as a laborer on the Bittner farm, Jennings's father moved the family to Littlefield and established a retail creamery. Life goes through, Jennings was married four times and had six children. He married Maxine Carol Lawrence in 1956 at age 18, with whom he had four children, Terry Vance, Julie Ray, Buddy Dean, and Deanna. Jennings married Lynn Jones on December 10, 1962, adopting a child, Tommy Lynn. They divorced in 1967. He married Barbara Elizabeth Rood in 1967. He composed the song this time about the trials and tribulations of his marriages and divorces. He married country singer Jesse Coulter in Phoenix, Arizona. On October 26, 1969, Coulter had a daughter, Jennifer, from her previous marriage to Dwayne Eddy. The couple had a son, Waylon Albright, known as Shooter Jennings. In the early 1980s, Coulter and Jennings nearly divorced due to his abuse of drugs and alcohol but remained together. His career includes, when Jennings was eight, his mother taught him to play guitar with the tune 30 Pieces of Silver. Jennings used to practice with his relatives' instruments until his mother bought him a used Stella guitar, and later ordered a Harmony Patrician. Early influences were Bob Wills, Floyd Tillman, Ernest Tubb, Hank Williams, Carl Smith, and Elvis Presley. Beginning with performing at family gatherings, Jennings played his first public concert at the Youth Center with Anthony Bonanno, followed by appearances at the local Jaycees and Lions Clubs. He won a talent show on Channel 13, in Lubbock, singing Hey Joe. He later made frequent performances at the Palace Theater in Littlefield, during local talent night. At 14 years, Jennings auditioned for a spot on KVOW in Littlefield, Texas. Owner J.B. McShann, along with Emil Matcha, recorded Jennings's performance. McShann liked his style and hired him for a weekly 30-minute program. Following this successful introduction, Jennings formed his own band. He asked Matcha to play bass for him and gathered other friends and acquaintances to form the Texas Longhorns. The style of the band, a mixture of country and western and bluegrass music, was often not well received. After several disciplinary infractions 16-year-old 10th grader Jennings was convinced to drop out of high school by the superintendent. Upon leaving school, he worked for his father in the family store, also taking temporary jobs. Jennings felt that music, his favorite activity, would turn into his career. In addition to performing on air for KVOW, Jennings started to work as a DJ in 1956 and moved to Lubbock. His program ran from 4 o'clock in the afternoon to 10 o'clock in the evening, filled with two hours of country classics, two of current country, and two of mixed recordings. The latter included early rock and roll stars such as Chuck Berry and Little Richard. The owner reprimanded him each time he aired such recordings, and after playing two Richard records in a row Jennings was fired. Jennings during a broadcast of his show on KLLL in 1958 Corbin was impressed with his voice, and decided to visit Jennings at the station after hearing him sing a jingle to the tune of Hank Snow's I Am Moving On. He expressed his struggle to live on a 50 United States dollars a week salary. Corbin invited Jennings to visit KLVT 
where he eventually took Corbin's position when it opened. The Corbin family later purchased KLLL, in Lubbock. They changed the format of the station to country, becoming the main competition of KDAV. The Corbins hired Jennings as the station's first DJ. On September 10, Jennings recorded the songs Joel Blonde and When Sin Stops with Holly and Tommy Alsop on guitars and saxophonist King Curtis. Holly then hired Jennings to play bass for him during his winter dance party tour. In March 1959 Joel Blonde was released on Brunswick with limited success. Now unemployed, Jennings returned to KLLL. Deeply affected by the death of Holly, Jennings's performance at the station worsened. He left the station after he was denied a raise and later worked briefly for the competition, KDAV. In the early 1960s, Jennings wrote and recorded the stage, a tribute to Valens, the Big Bopper, and Holly, as well as Eddie Cochran, a young musician who died in a road accident a year after the plane crash. Jennings formed his backing band, The Wailers, with bassist Paul Foster, guitarist Jerry Gropp, and drummer Richie Albright. The band soon earned a strong local fan base at JD's, where Jennings developed his rock-influenced style of country music that defined him in his later career. In 1961, Jennings signed a recording contract with Trend Records, and experienced moderate success with his single, Another Blue Day. In July 1963 Jennings signed a contract with A&M that granted him 5% of record sales. At A&M, he recorded Love Denied backed with Rave On, and Four Strong Winds backed with Just To Satisfy You. He followed up by recording demos of The Twelfth of Never, Kisses Sweeter Than Wine, and Don't Think Twice, It's All Right, and also produced the single Sing The Girls A Song, Bill, backed with The Race Is On. The singles were released between April and October 1964. Jennings SS Records found little success at A&M because the label was releasing mostly folk music rather than country at the time. He had a few regional hits around Phoenix, due to local radio airplay with Ian Tyson's Four Strong Winds and Just To Satisfy You, which was co-written with Bowman. Meanwhile, he recorded an album on Bat Records, called Waylon at JD's. After 500 copies were sold at the club another 500 were pressed by the Sounds label. He also played lead guitar for Patsy Montana on a 1964 album. Singer Bobby Bear heard Jennings S.S. Just to Satisfy You on his car radio while passing through Phoenix, and recorded it in Four Strong Winds. After stopping in Phoenix to attend a Jennings performance at JD's, Bear called Chet Atkins, head of the RCA Victor Studios in Nashville, and suggested he sign Jennings. Unsure after being offered a deal with RCA if he should quit his gig at JD's and relocate to Nashville, he sought the advice of RCA artist and friend Willie Nelson, who had attended one of Jennings' shows. Upon hearing how well financially Jennings was doing at JD's Nelson suggested he stay in Phoenix. Jennings then asked Herb Alpert to release him from his contract with A&M, which Alpert did. Atkins formally signed Jennings to RCA Victor in 1965. In August Jennings made his first appearance on the Billboard's Hot Country Songs chart with That's the Chance Ill Have to Take. Fame peaks began to count in 1966. Jennings released his debut RCA Victor album Folk Country, followed by Leave in Town and Nashville Rebel. Leave in Town resulted in significant chart success as the first two singles Anita, Your Dreaming and Time to Bum Again both peaked at number 17 on the Billboard Hot Country Songs chart. The album's third single, a cover of Gordon Lightfoot's That's What You Get for Lovin' Me, peaked at number 9, Jenning SS first top 10 single. Nashville Rebel was the soundtrack to an independent film, the Nashville Rebel, starring Jennings. In 1967 the single Green River charted on Billboard Country Singles at, Jennings released a hit single, Just to Satisfy You. During an interview, Jennings remarked that the song was a pretty good example of the influence of his work with Buddy Holly and rockabilly music. 
Jennings produced mid-chart albums that sold well, including 1967's Just to Satisfy You, which included the hit single, 60 Jennings' SS singles enjoyed success. The Chokin' Kind peaked at number 8 on Billboard's Hot Country Singles in 1967. While only Daddy That LL Walk the Line hit number 2 the following year. In 1969, his collaboration with the Kimberleys on the single MacArthur Park earned a Grammy Award for Best Country Performance by a Duo or Group. His single Brown-Eyed Handsome Man reached number 3 on the Hot Country Singles chart by the end of the year. In 1972, Jennings released Ladies Love Outlaws. The single that headlined the album became a hit for Jennings and was his first approach to outlaw country. Jennings was accustomed to performing and recording with his own band. Over time, however, Jennings felt limited by Nashville's lack of artistic freedom. He began to prepare for a change in direction with his career. His golden milestone comes to his tireless efforts before. In 1973, Jennings released Lonesome, Henri and Mean and Honky Tonk Heroes, the first albums recorded and released under his creative control. More hit albums followed with This Time and The Ramblin' Man, both released in 1974. The title tracks of both albums topped the Billboard Country Singles chart with the self-pinned this time becoming Jennings's first number one single. Dreaming My Dreams, released in 1975, including the number one single Are You Sure Hank Done It This Way, and became his first album to be certified gold by the RIAA. It was also the first of six consecutive, solo studio albums to be certified gold or higher. In 1976 Jennings released Are You Ready For The Country? Jennings wanted Los Angeles producer Ken Mansfield to produce the record, but RCA initially balked. Jennings and the Whalers traveled to Los Angeles and recorded with Mansfield at Jennings's own expense. A month later, Jennings returned to Nashville and presented the master tape to Chet Atkins, who, after listening to it, decided to release it. The album hit number one on Billboard's country albums three times the same year topping the charts for 10 weeks. It was named Country Album of the Year in 1976 by Record World magazine and was certified gold by the RIAA. In 1976, RCA released the compilation album Wanted. The Outlaws, with Jennings, Willie Nelson, Tom Pell Glazer, and Jennings's wife, Jessie Coulter. The album was the first country music album certified platinum. The following year, RCA issued O.L. Whalen, an album that produced a hit duet with Nelson, Lukenbach, Texas. The album Whalen and Willie followed in 1978, producing the hit single Mama's Don't Let Your Babies Grow Up to Be Cowboys. Jennings released I've Always Been Crazy, also in 1978. The same year, at the peak of his success, Jennings began to feel limited by the outlaw movement. Jennings referred to the overexploitation of the image in the song Don't You Think This Outlaw Bits Done Got Out of Hand, claiming that the movement had become a self-fulfilling prophecy. In 1979, RCA released Jennings's first greatest hits compilation, which was certified gold the same year, and quintuple platinum in 2002. Also in 1979, Jennings joined the cast of the CBS series The Dukes of Hazard as the balladeer, the narrator. The only episode to feature him as an actor was Welcome, Waylon Jennings, during the seventh season. Jennings played himself, presented as an old friend of the Duke family. For the show, he also wrote and sang the theme song Good O.L. Boys, which became the biggest hit of his career. Released as a single in promotion with the show it became Jennings's 12th single to reach number one on the Billboard Country Singles chart. On February 13, 2002, Waylon Jennings died in his sleep of diabetic complications at the age of 64, at his home in Chandler, Arizona. He was buried in the city of Mesa Cemetery, in Mesa. At his memorial service on February 15, Jesse Coulter sang Storms Never Last.